In this video, I'm gonna show you how to avoid injuries in jiu-jitsu. All right, so the truth is, you can never truly remove injuries from jiu-jitsu. It's a contact sport and they come with the territory. However, there are a few key things that if you have these things in place, you will reduce the likelihood of injury as much as possible. Now, what we're gonna look at today are four key aspects of you avoiding injuries in jiu-jitsu. You might find that you already have some of these measures in place, but then there's gonna be some new ones here that you probably don't. So the way that I want you to use this video is like a checklist. Have a look at what's in here that you're already doing, add to that whatever you're not, and then accumulatively by doing all of these things, you will make your chances of injury as low as possible. All right, chapter one. Here we're talking about rolling smart. This is how you manage yourself when you're at Jiu Jitsu in the academy. So the first part of this is that you want to choose your training partners wisely. If you're a young savage, 22 years old, full of adrenaline, full of testosterone, probably not a huge consideration for you at this point. However, if you find maybe you're a bit smaller than everyone at your academy, maybe you're a bit weaker, Maybe you're a bit newer and everyone else there is a bit better. Or perhaps you might've been in the game for a long time, but you're at the older end of the spectrum and you find that your body's not holding up with it the same way that it used to. This is a really relevant point. And again, you might not have to choose your training partners all the time, but it might just be something that you become aware of when you are carrying a minor injury. So what I mean by this is being selective about who you choose to roll with. No one says that you have to roll with everyone. Of course, maybe your coach has a different opinion on this and that's something you need to figure out. But essentially you have your training and it's your responsibility to manage that in the way that is most appropriate for you. So if you feel like maybe today is not the best day to be rolling with George, who's 50 kilos bigger than me and he's trying to get into purple belt, no gi worlds. Hey George, I'm gonna sit this one out and I might choose to roll with this person over here. Remember that you have that power and often choosing not to roll with a certain person can be the thing that's gonna help you to avoid injury. Just an extra point on that. By saying you don't wanna roll with someone, that is not necessarily a reflection on that person. It's just you knowing what's best for you on that day. So it's really important. The person who's larger than you is not necessarily the reason you're gonna get injured, but perhaps you find that in certain positions you might get into with that person, you could get injured. So it's really important. It's not a personal attack on anyone. It's just you knowing yourself and making the right decision for you. Second part here is knowing which positions or moments you are in danger. And so what I mean by this, and this is something that I experience a lot, even nowadays at Black Belt. If I go into a role with someone who's bigger and stronger than me, if I'm not really intentional about how I approach that role, I can often find myself in a bad position. It might be them on top, stack pass, me, it might be scrambling, right? They're trying to take me down and fighting for it. Basically what it means is the role can become quite chaotic. When it becomes chaotic, this is often where we are exposed to a higher risk of injury. So the flip side of that is when I go into a role with someone who's bigger and more athletic, if I identify before the role, okay, I know the positions, the times when I could be in danger here and I'm gonna do what I need to, to avoid those. So my intention in that role becomes about control. If we take that even further, it might even become about defense. So I might just think, okay, I'm gonna be framing hard, I'm gonna be using my guard because I know I'm not gonna be able to take them down, so I'm just gonna stay underneath and protect myself. That is a really smart way for me to approach that role. Now again, I'm not saying that this is something you wanna do all the time, but you do need to be mindful of what's in front of you and then think, okay, how do I keep myself as safe as possible when I'm training with this person. Now to the point before, sure, you could just say, no thanks, not today. But you might say, yes, I'm gonna go into the fire. However, in your mind, you have some measures in place or some standards that you're gonna maintain so that you can avoid getting into dangerous positions. Last point on this is keeping your ego in check. The beauty of jujitsu is that you can tap and the game resets. So if you find yourself in a bad situation, just tap physically, verbally, whatever you need to do. Now, the reality is ego is a part of the sport for all of us. Arguably, it's probably the real thing that we're developing when we're on the mats. But in any case, if you do find that your body's feeling a little bit injured or you're thinking maybe I shouldn't roll too hard today or maybe I don't know about training with so-and-so or that girl there always kicks my ass and she's a little bit aggressive. If you can identify that perhaps your ego is gonna flare up when you do go into a role with that person, that's a really valuable thing to acknowledge 
because it's probably your ego that's gonna get you in trouble. So whatever you need to do, deep breathing, forcing yourself to tap early, whatever it is that's gonna allow you to manage that side of your psyche, if you can keep your ego in check, you will reduce the likelihood of getting injured. All right, chapter two of avoiding injuries. First part here is that we wanna be stretching regularly. Now, stretching, for you as a jiu-jitsu athlete, holds a few key benefits. First is that when you're training jiu-jitsu, you are gonna be building tension through some very specific areas. So having a stretching practice after training is gonna allow you to undo that tension so that you can go to sleep and recover well and down-regulate your nervous system. The second part of stretching is that it's gonna allow you to open up new areas and new positions. So some of the work that we'll do in our training some of what's gonna to happen to us in daily life, sitting down, sitting in a car and whatnot, makes the body tight. So by having a stretching practice, it's gonna allow you to open the body up to get into new positions. This will not only allow you to perform better on the mats because you can now move better, but it's also gonna mean that instead of breaking, when someone puts you into a position that might be a bit awkward for you, your body already has some familiarity there. That's a really important aspect of it. And the third part about the stretching is that it just helps to prepare your tissues for what happens in jiu-jitsu. We are working at end ranges throughout the whole body and the way that joint locks and all of our joint submissions work is by putting your joint into its end range. So when you have stretching coupled with some strength training, which we'll talk about in a second, this is a really potent combination to bulletproof your joints and protect your body when you are on the mat. Second part here is strength training. And we recommend that you strength train at least twice per week. Now, the specific type of strength training you're doing doesn't matter all that much. But what does matter is that you are doing it consistently and you are doing it regularly. Now, twice a week for most people is achievable. Sessions only need to be from 45 to 60 minutes. In that amount of time, you can cover off all of the major areas in the body that you want to be strong. The main benefits of strength training for you as a jiu-jitsu athlete, one, you're gonna be building stronger connective tissue and stronger joints which is obviously important to us in a sport where people are attacking our joints. If we look at the majority of injuries in jiu-jitsu, they are joint injuries. The second part is that you are gonna be building strength to resist external force. So think about someone jumping guard on you or someone stack passing you. This is someone else's weight being applied against you. Now, strength training trains your body and your tissues to be better equipped to handle external load. So simply put, strength training is gonna to help to protect you on the mats. The third benefit of strength training is that it will simply increase your athletic performance, which of course is always a good thing. All right, third point here is sleeping, eating, and hydrating adequately. So what we're talking about for this, sleep is one of the most overlooked factors in recovery. And if you are not sleeping enough, your body is never at full health, and this exposes you to a greater risk of injury. So aiming for eight hours of sleep per night or more is gonna be the simplest way to approach that. Eating adequately, we wanna make sure that we're getting three square meals. The reason that nutrition plays a role in us avoiding injuries is that one, it allows us to get all of the nutrients we need to replenish our stores of energy, but also to rebuild any damage to our tissues, as well as giving us the nourishment we need to be able to show up to training with good energy. Now, if you're showing up to training and you haven't eaten enough and you haven't slept enough and you're not hydrated enough, there's a really high chance you're gonna get injured. You're not very coordinated, body's got a bit of lag in it, things aren't looking good. So eating is a huge part of this. Our recommendation is three square meals a day, making sure that you're getting a good serving of protein at every meal, lean sources wherever possible, and try to mix those up as well as plenty of carbohydrates you can have carbs whenever you like but two or three times per day sweet potato brown rice white rice whatever it is that floats your boat as well as plenty of vegetables and plenty of fruits so that you're getting a good mix of nutrients if you need more food on top of that add in a couple of snacks and that's a quality diet. Now the third part here is hydration and we simply just need to make sure that we're drinking enough water so that our body is hydrated for training and recovery. If you're not drinking enough, your brain's not gonna be working properly, your muscles aren't gonna be hydrated, your connective tissues will be dry. It's a really bad place to be stepping onto the mats and it definitely increases your risk of injury. So making sure that you are adequately hydrated is super important for anyone who's training jiu-jitsu. A simple tip here is to get yourself a really big ass bottle of water, two or three liters, fill it up at the beginning of the day and make sure that the thing is drunk by the end of the day. If you find that your bottle's not that big, make sure you're filling it up at least a few times so that you know you're hitting at least two liters of water a day. Chapter three, 
manage your training output. So there's a couple of main points I wanna mention here. The first one is that more isn't always better. What I mean by that, the culture of jujitsu is that the more you show up on the mats, the better you will get. This is undoubtedly true. However, there is a point where the returns are diminishing. Think about it like this. If you train three or four times a week at jujitsu, you work a full-time job, you got a family at home, and plus you go to the gym a couple times to do your strength training. If you ramp up your jujitsu to six or seven times, like maybe some of the young savages at your gym, you're probably gonna notice that you will sacrifice energy and quality in other areas of life. Your work, your family, your other training, your recovery, all of these things require your energy or your attention. So if you put more into jiu-jitsu, what can often end up happening is that you just start to drop off in those other areas. One of the common things that we see with jiu-jitsu players is that they might train five or six times a week, but often they're so fatigued in those sessions, and particularly by the end of the week, that they're not actually bringing their best mental energy and physical energy to the session. So in terms of actually learning new techniques, having an intentional deliberate practice, high quality roles, getting a lot out of it, assimilating the information after training, it doesn't happen to a high degree. What we often recommend is that by backing off your training a little bit, deciding, hey, instead of five, I'm gonna do three sessions a week, but I'm gonna really bring my best to each of those sessions. That can oftentimes be much more potent and allow you to see more rapid progress in your jiu-jitsu than if you were training double the amount. So more isn't always better. The other thing to mention here is knowing when to take a rest. Now, an example of this is, let's say that you have a good balance to your training schedule, everything's going great, you're working five days a week, training jiu-jitsu three times, lifting a couple of times, life is good. But perhaps you went out on the weekend and you had a big night, it's now Monday evening and you feel like shit. That's fine, let's say you push through. Tuesday, you're a bit tired, but you push through again. You get to the gym, do your strength training. Wednesday, you're a little bit more tired. Thursday, Friday, things start to taper off. Now, of course, there is merit to showing up even when you don't want to. However, if your body is telling you it's fucking tired, there's nothing wrong with taking a day off training. So whether it's taking a rest day from your strength work or your jiu-jitsu, to focus on a bit of recovery so that you can bounce back better, this is great. Now, like I said, it could have been a night out. It could have been that your baby was up all night and you only got a couple of hours sleep. Perhaps someone at home was sick. Maybe you were sick. Whatever it is, if you find that your body is telling you it needs a rest, it probably needs a rest. So don't be afraid to take it because over the medium to long term, this is going to allow you to see more success in your training. And that is going to help you to avoid injury and perform better on the mats. All right, chapter four, we're talking about having a system that you can use to manage your injuries. When the occasional niggle or little ache or pain pops up from jiu-jitsu, not, perhaps not the kind of injury where you would have to go and see someone or necessarily take time off, but just that thing where you know your elbow's a little bit sore, maybe you got stuck in an armbar for too long or you've got a shoulder that gets a bit sore every now and again. What's really important here is having the tools to be able to work on yourself and knowing how to use them. So these are a few of the tools here. We've got a lacrosse ball, which is like a hard massage ball. Okay, so any massage ball works, but a hard one is really good. A foam roller is a great tool. Now, it doesn't have to be made of foam. It could be your water bottle. If, if you've got a big ass water bottle, I really like to use that for the same kind of thing. You can roll on any implement, really. And then a, uh, a very light resistance band here. These are three really good tools, and there are others like voodoo flossing bands and whatnot. But the idea is if you can have these in your toolkit, so that is wherever, it, wherever they are where you're gonna use them. So if you, if you train in a gym, you might have them at the gym. If you tend to do this stuff in front of the TV late at night, you might have it there in your entertainment cabinet or in your bedroom. Um, or if you would do it on the mat at jiu-jitsu, you would carry it in your jiu-jitsu bag. But you have the tools available and you have a couple of basic techniques on how to use them. Now, our account is full of videos on how to foam roll, how to use bands to fix your elbow and your wrist injuries, how to use a little cross ball, and there's a bunch of other stuff on the internet that'll teach you how to do it. So I'm not gonna talk about that now, but if you have them handy, then at least you know when you cop that little injury, you can resort to these tools, and most of the time, they're gonna help you to at least alleviate the pain 
if not get rid of the injury altogether. The second part around having a good system for injury management is having a physiotherapist, or if you're in the States, a physical therapist on your side. Someone that you can turn to who is a professional can assess the problem and then treat you for it. Now, this is really important. And what's really important about this is that the actual therapist you go to understands the demands of jujitsu. It doesn't mean they have to train it themselves, though I do think that is really of benefit because they understand the culture and they understand the game. But at least they work with other jujitsu practitioners. Maybe they've seen how the sport plays out. They might come from a contact sport themselves. My physiotherapist has a rugby background and I find that that's really good because he understands tough, rough and tumble training, right? And he understands wanting to continue to engage in the sport even when you are injured. And that is largely the problem that most of us jujitsu players face. So. Having a therapist, one that understands the demands of the sport, they know you well, and then they obviously have a good understanding of the body and fixing injuries. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a physiotherapist, it could be an osteopath, even a good chiropractor, but it's your person to turn to when the problem or the injury is at a point where you're like, I need someone else to help me with this. When you can book an appointment with that person, you can go and see them. Yes, it's gonna cost you $100 or whatever it does. But the reality is, if you can go see them, they say, hey, lay off the rolling for a couple of weeks, but do these handful of drills and then come back and see me next week. If it takes you two weeks to fix that injury versus you fuck around with it, you have the niggling pain for months and months, you're not able to train jujitsu the way you want to, it's messing up your sleep, and then three months down the track, you decide to go and see them. That is arguably money very well spent in my opinion. So it's really important, have a good physiotherapist or therapist of some kind on your side. All right, so that's our four key points on how you can avoid injuries in jujitsu. We talked about rolling smart, doing the work off the bat, managing your training output, and having a system for injury management. If you can cover off all of these areas and make sure that you are performing at least 80% in all of them, you will vastly reduce your chances of injury, which will allow your jujitsu to progress indefinitely. If you enjoyed today's video, please like it and leave us a comment. Let me know any feedback on it. Also make sure you subscribe to our channel. Our goal is to put out as much helpful content around becoming strong, being healthy, and being mobile for jujitsu as possible. So there's bound to be other stuff on our channel that you like. Thanks for watching.